Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday, December 6th. I'm Kate Richberg. Welcome to the beadshop.com live broadcast today. Um, we've got a wrap bracelet or two to share with you to go with our new products that just launched yesterday. I hope you saw those. I hope you like them. I'm going to go over them today and then we're going to go over what to do with them. So let's see who is here. So many of you are here. Um, great to have you all. Oh my goodness. Christine Whitney, I was just thinking about you this morning. So I'm glad to see you. I'm not kidding. Uh, I was really just thinking about you this morning. That's hilarious. I love it. Yep. Sorry. I had to uh, do a quick little restart here. So sometimes <clears throat> we just have to jump in and make sure uh, everything is working. But anyway, it's great to have all of you all here. Um, so let's see. Gosh, everyone is here and watching. Great to have you all. Well, let's jump in, my friends, and get this party started. I want to show you the new product, and then I want to show you the projects that Drea and I have been doing. I don't and I have no idea what's going on with my hair right here. There we go. That might be a little bit better. And let's see if my glasses are clean. They are perfect. And it's also sweater weather here. I see that a lot of you are saying like the weather and everything, what's happening where you are. It's pretty nice. It's actually going to hit 73 in Fresno today. That's what they say. But it's still, for me, it's sweater weather. <laughs> sweater weather. Um, okay. Let me add my <clears throat> other camera here. We're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about um, Drea's piece as well. But hold the phone because I want to show you. Let me enlarge this so you folks can see it. Um, Janice got... Uh, got some new beads together. Where am I going to put this? Let me put that over there. So it doesn't, it's a little precarious, but hopefully it won't fall. She got some new beads together that we love, love, love. We love tiles, Checkmates tiles, and we love the bars that kind of go with them, the check bars. Oh, it is an antique. Thank you. From my mama. It's, it's a sterling and what we like to call paste. Piece. Well, let me show you. <clears throat> I've got them all in these bags here. And let me just start kind of by dumping these out. When I was looking at these, I sent a photo to Janice um, and they were all um, laid out kind of in a color rainbow. I just, these bars I love. So let me just start laying these out for you. Let me zoom out a little bit here <clears throat> so we can take a look at these. And then when Drea and I, and also I want to spotlight this, so you don't need to see me. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, when Drea and I saw these, we were talking about the launch yesterday, or last week, seems like yesterday, but it was last week. And we were thinking, oh, shoot, you know what? We should show how to actually work with these. I mean, you folks know how to work with them, right? But um, it would be fun to do a quick project. So <clears throat> Drea and I picked the colors. Drea got us our beads. Uh, we ordered them from our, our uh, remote location um, where we fulfill orders. And we got to work. Now, Drea finished hers, of course, in record time because she is a fast, fast ladder-er, I guess is what I want to say. I was a little slower and I had a couple other things that I had to deal with. Sales tax, I'm looking at you. But, um, but we got them 
almost done. Drew got hers done. She got it in the mail. And of course it's delayed. My things got came in the mail. They were also a little delayed. So the best laid plans, right? Go awry. But um, <clears throat> I have a photo of Drea's. It should get here. That's what we're hoping anyway, that it will get here. We'll get a photo and it's going to go on the website. In the meantime, and I'll show you this uh, on the web, you can see the two color palettes that Drea and I used. And what we did was we intentionally limited ourselves to kind of an abbreviated palette. So we would have to get creative with our designs, right, and stuff. So um, not, not designs, but our patterning with the beads. So we used the uh, Checkmates bar, and I'm going to show you what they are. And then we used some of our new Checkmates tiles. And you saw those right here um, at the beginning when I showed you this beauty. Those are the new ones that are laid out in rainbow order, right? So beautiful. You'll find them right now in our Just In, and these are permanent additions to our collection. You know, <clears throat> Janice and I kind of call this bead kind of an old school bead. This checks uh, this uh, check checkmates tile that we've got. It's a two hole bead. It's not a Japanese bead like Atila is. It's a check glass bead has a lot of curb appeal in my opinion has a great vintage vibe to it and three of the bars match in width one of the tiles does that make sense and you'll see that when i ladder okay so these are really, I, I really love them. And when Drea told me, she said, we can only use three beads in our project. And I was like, wait, what? Because <laughs> you know me, I like to throw a lot of beads at it. <clears throat> and so we use three beads in each of our palettes and it really brought home um the way you can fine tune a design or use just those three beads to create a lot of patterning. You know, Janice in her, um, in her uh, color class, her big necklace class, Janice, I don't know why it's all of a sudden escaping me, but um, she talks about patterning with beads and we talked about patterning with beads at the retreat this year too. It was one of the things that in our breakout sessions that we talked about. So um, <clears throat> having kind of a limited palette and being able to create different patterns with those, it really shows you, um, you know, what you can do with just these few beads. So here are all the tiles. Okay, I'm going to get all of these little, this is how I send them over to Claire. I have to bag each one up, send them over to Claire to photograph. <laughs> then they come back to me in these little bags. Anyway, not all beads, beads and games over here, kids. <laughs> so here's <clears throat> kind of a rainbow order. Tricks of the trade. Thanks, JP. Sorry about that. I don't know why I was blanking on the name, but tricks of the trade. Janice talks a lot about patterning and stuff. So if you haven't gone to that class and grabbed her handout, it's the same handout that she used to use in <clears throat> her class at our brick and mortar store. It's one that's really worth checking out. It's like a master class uh, in design, right? Here's one more. I this one went kind of by the wayside. There you go. So the coatings are very similar since these are all check beads. The coatings on these beads are 
similar. Okay, they kind of are meant to go hand in hand, and some might actually be exactly the same, right? This one here is especially lovely. It's kind of hard to see. You can't really see it on the camera. It might look black. This is a matte navy, which I will tell you, I just, I, the, the matte of this bead, kind of the dark kind of blueberry navy of this bead is just gorge, gorgeous, gorgeous. I love it. I'm going to put it up here actually with this kind of one right there. I think, I feel like that's where it goes. I don't know. You could arrange these beads all day, right? And I need to be careful or I might get distracted and just arrange these and not go to the, not go to the project. Um, so what I'm going to be demoing with today is uh, I'm going to use some check glass that should really show you. Uh, you'll, you should be able to see what I'm doing with the patterns. And I tried to grab a, um, a fairly cohesive palette, one that was fairly monochromatic, just like Drea and I did uh, when we picked for our project. So I've picked, this is that Pacifica poppy seed, which we also have in the tile bead. So it's a fairly, uh, and this one is the rainbow lavender. So it's a, it's, this palette has a little more contrast. I'm going to use distressed gray, um, as my leather. So you can kind of see that. <clears throat> let me show you now, uh, let me share the screen on the website. And I want to show you the two um, samples that Drea and I did. So bear with me here just a second. I'm going to go to the home page. Um, I'm going to share the screen. There we go. Share the screen. And I want to share that. Okay. <clears throat> so now here's the, the home page of the website. Okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click on that photo that has all the tiles on it. And you can see the bars photo is up there too. Uh, let me click on that photo. And we're going to go to our mosaic wraps. Now, mosaic wrap is an old school wrap that we've done here at Bead Shop. We've done it in several incarnations. Really beautiful. Some we've done with the Japanese tile beads. Some we've done with Checkmates tiles. Look at these hibiscus, the red, green, purple, and blue hibiscus. Those are all done with Checkmates. Harvest corn. I think Janice did this one. <clears throat> Some of these, we don't have these beads any longer just because they're no longer available. But some we do. You can make your substitutions with them. I love a wrap that just is what we call mosaic, which is using the tilas or the tiles. Um, this is one called Point Reyes that I got a little crazy with. What a surprise. Um, but here are our two colorways that Drea and I did. We called one tarragon, the green, and one marjoram, the kind of pinky one. Okay. So if you click on this, like here's mine <clears throat> for the tarragon, you'll see here's the whole listing of everything I did. And then, friends, you can also just see what the recipe is here right? So you can choose the button you want. You can choose the KO, the leather, the tiles, the bars, and the round uh, ADOT seed beads. Okay. So it's all there. Drea's colorway is marjoram. You can see, look at this pink. She also used distress gray on hers, um, which I just love that color for a wrap. She used the halo cherub in the uh, Checkmates tile, um, the matte metallic suede pink in the bar, and then the metallic dark raspberry. And we both used the tea leaves button. So, so beautiful. So those will be up um, and in um, and on the website. Hopefully Drea's will be here soon and hopefully I'll have mine done soon. But let me tell you, uh, let's take a look at the sizes of these 
And let's then go ahead and pull all these together. Let me show you real quick, since I have a split screen here, I want to show you, this is Drea's um, piece. Um, she just whipped up a quick little sampler of the stitches that she used. So we're going to look at this in a second, but can you see how she's just used that round a dot, the bar, and then that checkmate tile. It's an infinite number of, uh, possibilities that you can play around with. Let's take a look at the beads though. <clears throat> first, let me double check comments, see what I'm doing. And Stephanie, this is a great question. What's the difference between the Czech tiles and the Japanese Tila beads? Uh, let me show you. Let me get out. I think I've got some of those sitting here. Um, I should have anticipated that question. It's such a good question. Here they are. I've got a whole box of them here. Hmm. Uh, let me show you. Here are some regular tiles. I just need tiles, please. Here's a here's a half. Here's a quarter. And do I have a two? Oh, I must. Here's here's the mix that tile mix I did a while back that has some full tiles in it. So we'll look at that. Okay, <clears throat> so let me, I'm going to cut this one apart because I'm going to use this. Okay, and let me, um, let me show you here. So this is what I'm going to use. Let me cut these apart. And let me pull out a Japanese Miyuki. I'll get one that's a little darker. It might be easier to see. Here we go. So here they are. <clears throat> Holes are this way, north and south, like this. Okay. So can you see the check bead is a little bigger? Let me zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. There we go. You can see that a little better. And then they both have a double hole, a hole here, the hole is here, okay? Here's the half tile. So theoretically, two of these make up one of the tiles, okay? So here's the bars, uh, there's the bar. And on this bars, three of these bars make up one of the tiles. Let me get a, uh, a, uh, a tweezer or something here. Yeah. I'll make it a little bit easier for me to move things around. So here's the hat, the, the bar. And you can see it's a little thinner actually than the um, half tila right here. Okay. So here's this. So three of these make up one. Two of these, they actually go like that. There we go. Two of these make up two. I'm lining up the holes here. So if you want things to take up the same amount of space, right, I'll just do it like that. I can't make them sit up. <clears throat> but three of these bars equals one of the width of this tile. So let me show you what that width is. Hole to hole I'm measuring here. So it's a little over six millimeter from the hole to the hole here. And then the bar is a little shy of two millimeters. So three of those bars equals one of the tiles. And you can see the, the thickness. See how that one's a little bit thicker? This 
Miyuki a little bit thinner. Okay. Um, so these, the tiles are square and the bars are a slice, but they're the same length. So this should be, yeah, about six, six mil. Just a slight discrepancy. Okay. So that's that. Um, so you could totally recreate this with the Japanese tiles or uh, tile beads. You definitely could. You might have to play around a little bit with the patterning, but a lot of our mosaic wraps that we have on the site use um, the Miyuki's rather than the Checkmates. Okay. So you can, I, I wouldn't use them. I guess you could, you could just use them in different sections, but they're not really interchangeable. Okay. So anyway, let me put these back in here and let's get to the project, shall we? I'm going to get rid of, let me put these tiles away. Oh, pardon me. That sneeze came out of nowhere. Sorry about that. I'm fine. It's just a little bead dust. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. <laughs> let me move these over. <clears throat> and let me get my other tray. So I hope that answers the questions about those. And you can go and find all of the new colors as well as the current colors. You know, the the... I don't want to say old colors, but the colors that we've carried previously. Okay. Um, okay. So I want to put this over there. I want to put these over there. Now, Drea created a three wrap for her piece. And so I kind of did the same thing measured for the same thing with the tiles with the tiles okay so let me show you let me get it a little tighter here so just as a refresher here is Drea's piece here okay so you can see at the very top she's tapered which we're going to do then she added a tile and then she did kind of like a little uh, offset mosaic with the um, bars and the a dots, and then just the tiles with one skinny row of a dots in between, and then kind of another little mosaic with the um, bars and a dots. And I'll show you all of these stitches. My stitches are a little bit different. And what I've done here is I've completed one wrap. What I'm going to do when I'm thinking about doing a bracelet that is fairly like monochromatic and has a limited amount of beads, it actually, I think is a little bit freeing because I don't have to worry about, I don't have to focus on which beads to use so much as like the pattern of what I've got going on. Okay. So what I did here was I uh, cut two yards for a three wrap. My wrist is six and a half inches. So I cut two yards of the 1.5 millimeter um, in the distressed, what did I use? I'll tell you right now, just to make sure I don't say the wrong thing. I use the natural turquoise uh, for this. It has a little bit more of a green tint to it, which I love. Then I use the oxidized bronze clay in the Checkmates bars and in the Checkmates tiles, I use the metallic suede light green and one of my favorite all time ADOTs, the matte metallic blue green I used here. Okay. And then Drea's, Drea's listing, she's got everything. So, okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. So when I cut my thread or when I cut my leather, I'm going to, let me add myself back in. I'm going to cut uh, two yards of this, right? So there we go here, two yards total. 
and that doubles over. And the way that I look at that is, here's my two yards doubled over here. And I just get my wrist and I make sure it's gonna wrap with plenty of room. I've got plenty of room here to like tie knots or whatever it is I wanna do. But this is great for a three wrap, okay, right here. So what I did at the top here is, you know, you can start it any way you like. You can just tie a knot. I think what Drea did is she did the macrame, but she did it with the KO, right? I did a macrame with the leather and then I ran my KO right underneath. So let me show you how that's done. I don't really have a button here, but it doesn't matter. This is just a practice run because I want to check out some of the, um, the patterning on this. So I would add my button. Let me see if I can grab a button just real quick. Yeah, here they are. It'll make it a little bit easier. Um, this button's a little smaller. Let's see if it'll go. I think it'll be all right. <clears throat> and this is the leather that I'm using is the 1.5 mil, but you could use one, 1 1.5, two, whatever, whatever works. Okay. Whatever works for you. Um, Janice, thanks for bringing up the lookbooks. You know, we're going to have to do a deep dive, a show, maybe on a Friday, a deep dive into our lookbooks. The lookbooks are so great. They were put together by bead shop team at one time and then our design team for others. And they're really uh, delicious and very inspirational. Okay. So what I did was I brought my bead or my button rather to the center of my cord. And then I just came in, I got one of my clampers and I just clamped it to the board for now. Okay. Now I'm going to cut about a foot. You can get a little bit of a thinner leather if you want. I just used like maybe a foot of the um, 1.5 millimeter. <clears throat> and I've just come in and I'm going to macrame using this flat or this round leather rather. And again, you could do this with a one millimeter. Whoops, I knew that was going to happen. I should have a little string here, but I just clipped the button right to the board. And sometimes it doesn't want to stay. Let's see if that stays. If it doesn't, I'll get a thread. But I'm just going to macrame, just the plain flat macrame, just a few. Whoops, don't let that bottom underneath twist at all. I think it has a nice, interesting kind of look to it, but however you like to start your wrap bracelet, that's how you can start it. If you go to our tricks to laddering, we literally have, I don't know, hundreds, it feels like, of wrap bracelet samples up there. Um, there's a lot of different ways to start them. I wanted a little bit of leather near mine up here, so that's what I used. I'm going to um, thread a needle now and get my thread ready for laddering. Drea and I both used the infinity stitch for this um, because uh, we're using the smaller hold that the tiles and stuff and it's uh, easier to, in my opinion, to do the infinity stitch. So I have a double strand of KO for this stitch and I'm going to pull my KO out. I'm going to pull, this is going to be maybe a little bit shorter, but usually I start with a couple of yards here, or as we like to say, sometimes a wingspan. And then uh, if you want to wax it, if you have your wax handy, which I happen to have right here, I'll go ahead and wax the thread. You could use fire line, whatever, um, whatever skinny thread you like using, you go for it. I prefer KO with this, um, with this ladder, the infinity stitch. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut with my Zeron shears, a nice clean cut. And now I'm going to use a sharps. I'm sure that Drea used a size 10 seed bead needle, needle the thread and bring it through. Okay. So what I do here now is I hide the thread under this macrame. So let me show you. Janice also just put up the link, the how to macrame. We've got it in our skill builders over on beadshop.com. So you can find all of that info. If you go to our skill builders, there's a lot of skill building info over there um, for a lot of the basics that we do here. So I urge you to check that out. Um, so let me take this off and I'll show you. Here's my macrame here. Can you see it? So here's this. I'm going to take my 10 on, or my uh, size 10 sharps needle and I'm going to slide it underneath the macrame there, trying not to pierce the leather. I needed a little help with my pliers there. Can you see that? The needle has just come through. Now I'm going to slide this through so that my thread is captured under my macrame. See how it's sliding through here? Now before I pull it through even more, I'm going to take a little bit of the GS Hypo cement and I'm going to glue this down. Stay there. Let me grab my Hypo cement. Um, I also, oh, sorry about that. I've also used the Zap glue. Um, I actually, to full disclosure, I use Zap on this one because I needed it to dry quickly. Um, so you could use the zap. You just need to be really careful with both of these glues when you're gluing that you're not um, that you're not making a real mess with all the glue. Of course, I pulled a hypo cement that's has a little bit of glue at the tip here. So bear with me as I get that off. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is. I'm going to put a little bit of K of a uh, hypo cement there, and then I'm going to pull that thread through so that cement is coming underneath this macrame. Okay. So now um, I'm going to come in, I'm going to continue to glue. I need to sit this cement up. There we go. I'm also going to use a thread. Um, a little uh, too precarious without it. I'm just clipping that right to the thing. So let me loop this through. No, this one. Which side do I want it to go to? This side. I'm going to loop this leather around the button. And clip that down. After the beginning of the year, folks, our new master class that we're going to be doing for the first half of the year is going to be all about ladder. I'm really excited to share so many laddering techniques with you, but we're going to start at the very beginning and make it all happen. So here's my um, KO that's underneath here. Okay, like that. And like that. 
I could get the tip of my GS, get a little more, <coughs> pardon me, a little more down there. And I'll let this dry overnight. But for today's purposes, we're going to get rid of that tail. Okay, so it's not in the way. Now, I still have a little bit of space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie one more knot. This is going to be my closing knot. <coughs> I'm going to add, pardon me, a little bit of GS right here. And I'm going to do one final macrame knot over it. Now, as I'm pulling this tight, watch what I do. When it's coming in here, like the loop, like this, okay, I'm going to come in right here where the leather curves, where the knot is going to tighten. I put a little glue on both of those sides. Tighten everything up so the glue is kind of captured in that knot. Now I turn it over to the back and I carefully glue under that knot and under that knot. Now this I won't cut off until it's really um, set. Okay, but if it's glued well and thoroughly, you're not going to have any issue with it. Okay, so I'm going to come back to this in a second, but let's take a look here. See how I have my leather. So I'm just going to get, I'm going to get rid of these right up here. Clip. That one there, and that one there. Okay, and this has just made a really nice, um, just really nice way to start it off. That's funny, you folks. Most glue I've ever seen you use. You know, I glue friends, just not all the time. And when I do, you've got a good glue habits, right? If you have shoddy glue habits, all goes to hell in a handbasket, right? Right away. So I think this is looking good. Let me grab something else real quick. And then I'm going to show you the layout of the first piece that I'm doing. Um, and you can start deciding how you want your layout to be. All right. Had to get a little bit of water but it was on my desk across the room. Okay, so the way that this is designed, let me pull back a little bit. I have done Janice's trick of creating a design or working on a design until I like it. Then I stop, I flip it, and I bring it, I'm gonna bring it to a close here. So what I did was I wanted the design up to here be about half of my wrap. So all of, from here, this macrame to here, this should be about three and a half inches. Let's see if I even measured. Oh, thank goodness, on the money, just a little a hair longer than three and a half. So perfect, because then this length here, when I finish it up, this will be about seven inches and this will be my first wrap, okay? So I'm gonna put this aside again because I'm at the point where I wanna change out thread and I know you folks like to see the thread change out. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second and I want to show you how I'm going to start everything. Okay. So let me get our other friend back here. Let me see. I've got this needle that I don't want to lose because that's ready to go. <clears throat> here.
here's this. And I'm going to cut these a little shorter because they are getting in my way a bit. And I've done about uh, three knots per side here. Okay. So here we are. Let me put this back here. Christine, thanks for your great tips on dealing with the GS tube. It's true, you don't want to squeeze it when you're using it. Just kind of the glue's going to flow, <laughs> kind of regardless, right? So, um, yeah, you just have to kind of, you know, control it best you can. I like to um, work over a plastic baggie too, so I don't get glue on my beading surface. Okay, let me roll up my sleeves here. So here's where the work comes. And this sweater for sweater, sweater weather has pretty long sleeves. Okay, so the way that I started mine, and I think the way that Drea started hers, let me get Drea's up on the um up on the screen here. So see with Drea's, you can see how she's tapered. I think she went one, two to three seed beads. Same thing that I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna start with the taper. So let me get my eight aughts. I think eight aughts are the right size for this. Can you tell I use this for a different project and put the beads back in? Because there are some beads that are a different color. Those I'm just going to consign to the, let's be honest, to the floor right there. Okay, there we go. So with Infinity Stitch, just a reminder, and I know it's hard. Let me get a piece of white paper over here because that gray is just too gray. Um, here we go. And it's hard for you to see. Okay, better. All right. So with Infinity Stitch, I'm right-handed, my right hand over here. Okay. So I start my Infinity Stitch from the left-hand side and my needle my thread is doubled over my needle through the eye. And remember, I pulled that thread through here. So the doubled thread is coming out underneath my macrame. But this could have been macrame with the KO. It could have been silk wrapped on. There's a myriad of ways, you know, whatever your favorite way of attaching. I did this silk wrap here because I wanted, I mean, this macrame because I wanted a little more leather showing. Now, I start by... <clears throat> I'm going to dip my thread underneath here to set it up so it's coming out from the left-hand side. Can you see that? Now I'm going to get one of my A-dots, put that A-dot on. I'm going over the left-hand side, under the right-hand side of the leather, getting it tangled in my tweezers. And just slide that A dot so it sits right there between the two lengths of leather. Let me get a little closer. Okay. So now this is why it's called infinity, right? We come back, we've gone under this right leg. I'm going to come over the right leg. through the bead and under the left leg of wire of uh, cord. Okay. And pull that tight. Now, if your thread is kind of funny here, like on this side, just kind of pull that loop out a little bit. Your first ones, you know, if you have a little bit of a tangle, just untangle it like that, like so pull everything tight. You can also use your tweezer here to help you seat that stitch just right. Okay, so <clears throat> now I'm going to taper up to two. 
So here are two. I had gone under the left leg, so now I'm going to bring this thread up and over the left leg, under the right leg with my needle. Control the beads, slide everything so nothing tangles. Make sure and pull both threads evenly because you're using a doubled over thread, right? And you want to pull them both equally so that they lay nice and flat around your leather here, okay? So I've gone under the right-hand side. Now I come over through the beads, dip it down, and tighten. And of course, when your leather or when your thread is long, it's going to get caught on everything. So just kind of tame that thread. And as you pull it, You want to pull both strands and push it in. Okay, let's do the third one to get up to three because then we're going to put in a tile. Okay, so let me see. There are some great questions here. Kathleen, the 2024 Masterclass will begin, I think it's going to be the first Wednesday of the year. It'll be the first broadcast or thereabouts, I think. But it'll start in January. Usually this last one, I had made it the first broadcast. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it the first broadcast of the month or whichever, but it's going to be the same um, in the same week each month, the same date. So either the first, second, third, or fourth Wednesday of the month. Okay. Um, and Janice also linked the infinity stitch handout right here. Okay. So let's do the third row. <clears throat> let's put on three. One, two, and three. And then after I do this one, we're going to start examining the patterns, okay, of what you can do with these three beads. And Kathleen, that's a good uh, question. Right, one side of the thread, Kathleen's question is, does one th side of the thread kind of slant? It does. For me, the opening stitch or the, the first side of the stitch, in my case, it's the left-hand side, slants up a little bit at a diagonal. And then the second stitch as I come back through the thread path sits a little more around, you know, straight across the leather. Um, it's just, that's kind of how the edges of this stitch are. Kind of like if you weave, if you do any weaving, you know that with your weft, your warp threads, as you go from the right to the left and the left to the right, your selvage edge looks a little bit different on one side than the other. Kind of the same when you're doing this, okay? So, um, okay, so now I'm ready. I'm going to do a couple of patterns with the bars and I'm going to do it on here because it's much easier for you folks to see. Okay. And then um, I'll show you, we'll get back to the one that I'm making. I'm going to change the thread and taper down and show you how I'm going to deal with that. Okay. So <clears throat> for this one, I'm going to do that little kind of like a little uh, plus sign or cross kind of a, uh, pattern. I've put an eight dot on, and this is mixing eight dots and two holes. So when you do a two hole, okay, that two hole, you treat each hole of the bead in its own path, right? As if it were one bead. So I've gone through the top hole and I've added an eight dot, the top hole of the bar and an eight dot. Now I'm not gonna jump down and go down through here. I'm gonna get through here like this. I'm gonna go back through the same thread path. So there it is. Make sure you get all three holes here. There we go. And I'm through. And see how I've got that little bubble of thread right there? So I wanna pull to make sure that both threads, 
there we go, are nice and tight. So now I'm going to go through the second hole. So I'm going to put on my A dot. Good question um, here. Yes, you can certainly start out from the right. So if you're left-handed, it may be a little uh, more comfortable for you to go from the right to the left to start. Whatever works. doesn't make any difference, just as long as you're consistent. Okay. So here's this. So can you see how I've captured the second hole of the bar? <clears throat> and I come through. Okay. Pull it so it's even. And now I'm going to come back through. that up a little bit. Like so. And put it down. Okay. So now I'm going to put the bars on the outside and an A dot in the middle. Let me see if the focus is off. Oh, let me just uh, see. Zoom it back in. Sometimes the focus gets a little wonky on the zoom. So um, if it was off a little bit, hopefully that fixed it. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in. So here's this one. We've got the two bars. A lot of you look like you are right-handed and you start on the right-hand side. So awesome. I love that experience for everybody. So yeah, just whatever works for you. I think in any of these stitching or anything, really, you know, when you're doing beadwork, as long as your tension is good and you're consistent with your technique doesn't really matter, right? As long as the result looks like you want it to. So now I'm going to come over, I'm going to go through the bar, slide on an eight, go through the second bar, and under. Okay, and I'm going to go back through that path. And we'll finish it up, this little motif. I like these two beads. <coughs> I like these two beads together. Yeah, consistency is the key. Christine, isn't that so just like in life in general? Consistency. <laughs> oh, might be my downfall. I don't know. Um... Is this looking like a little person to you? It's looking like a little person to me with their little arms reaching out. So here's that one. So can you see how I've got the motif, the bar, the outside bars, and the bar in the center? Like that. Then I'll show you. This is the one that I did in my um, piece. And then I'll show you one that Drea did in her piece. Can you see I used it? I used it right there. Okay, like this here and there. And then I did a row of three. And then I reversed it right there. Okay. So, whoops. The hardest part of this is not tangling your flipping thread, right? Um, here we go. <clears throat> eight out on through the bottom hole of the bar. Eight out on. And you can repeat your motifs as, you know, how whatever you like. 
do as Janice says, go until you like it and then change it up. And then when you're at the center of, you know, at about three and a half like this, flip it and just do it the opposite way to the end. Um, yeah, Anissa, you could do this with Eslon, especially the skinny Eslon, like the Eslon D or whatever that size is. If you're going to use the Ceylon or the Eslon um, doubled over, probably the micro would be the one that you'd want to use. It still might be a little heavy for it, but you can certainly try it. I think a doubled micro um, will work. But if you have the skinny Ceylon D, I think it is, or Eslon D, um, that'll work too. Okay, so here we go, under and down. Now, let me show you this other little kind of a similar motif that Drea used, but it comes out, this is more like a little flower. Drea did hers more like a little um, cross motif, and I'll show you that. So we're going to put on a, an A dot, a bar, and an A dot. Go underneath. <clears throat> and go back through the top. Now instead of putting an A dot on for this, I'm going to put on a bar. See how I'm also pulling this tight? I've got my needle through the loop and I've got everything evenly tensioned and then I pull my thread through. So I'm going to get my bar, top hole of the bar, bottom hole of the bar that's already on there, top hole of the bar on the last bead. Okay. So see what I've got there? This would also really make a great color variation. <clears throat> if you, you could do it kind of ombre like if you were using like shaded versions of the bars. So I'm going to go back through that top hole, bottom hole, top hole of that row. Tighten that up. There we go. There's a little, there it is. A little bit of thread. The wax helps to keep the two threads together, but sometimes you really have to look and make sure that that's looking correct, that it's lined up correctly. Uh, let me make sure I'm using the right bead. The two bars that I'm using are very similar in color, but this is the Pacific poppy seed. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the bottom hole, put on a new bar, bottom hole of the other bar. So see how that's more of like a little I call it a cross, but it's not really. It's like a little, almost like a little brick wall there. Can you see it? Then I'll go back through that one. Finish it up with an A dot. center hole, A dot, and down. There we go. And come back. Then what I'm going to do to finish it is I'll do just a plain row of A dots, like a little palette cleanser. One, two, and three. Okay. Now let's do 
<clears throat> a row of three bars up next to a tile so you can see how that looks. It's fun to use all of these because they all kind of fit together like building blocks or bricks or Legos, you know, that whole thing. And this is probably about, I'm going to count this in my length too because I would go until, yep, yeah, so that's, a, so I've got about an inch left before I'd reverse this, okay? Because this is all, in about an inch, I'll be at the center of my first wrap, right? Or thereabout, right? Um, good question. Diane is asking why double the thread? You know, you could just go single, right? And we've done that before. We've laddered with just a single thread, infinity stitch. But this hole is large enough that I feel a doubled over strand of KO as it goes through the beads one way and coming back through the beads the other way, especially on a wrap bracelet that gets a lot of wear and tear. Uh, it's just a little stronger, just my opinion, right? So that's what I like. I like doubling when I can. So here we go. So I've put gone through my top. So see how I've got three of those bars right there. I know the whole wraps. I love how the bars look. And you can just repeat the bars, repeat the bars. Let me do a palette cleanser. I guess that's what I call it when I put in a little row of eight dots. Let me do another eight dot row. Oh. I can't do an eight-aught row until I stitch in the bottom of the, I got too excited. I have to stitch in the bottom of the bars here. There we go. So pretty. Now I'll put on the three eight-aughts. <clears throat> now I'll put on my three. There we go go over and back through, and then I'll put on a bar. I mean a tile. I don't know if when you were a kid, did you play with Lincoln Logs? I was obsessed with Lincoln Logs as a kid. I loved to build with them. For those of you not in the States, you may have had your UK or other country version of them, but they were essentially like little logs, like the American log cabin logs that you'd put together and build cabins, little houses and stuff. I would build forever with those things. And then I'd have like little miniature people that I could put, go in and out with them, you know, put them inside. So fun. And then I take them apart, build something new. Lincoln Logs plus the Little House Books by Laura Ingalls Wilder. And you're pretty much looking at my childhood. That and the Five Little Peppers, right, Ma? Did anyone, did that's an old by Margaret Sidney. They were written at the end of the 1800s. So quaint. I don't know if anyone read The Five Little Peppers, but 100%. Um, I, I still read. I have them all. I still read them. Talk about a wholesome read. If you haven't checked them out, check them out. You can find them. <clears throat> I think they're in the, the common, you know, they're not copyrighted any longer. So you can find them um, to download for your Kindle a lot of times. Um, yeah. Oh, I love it. M. Lincoln Lock. We, we would have been besties then, just like we're besties now. <laughs> we would have brought our Lincoln Logs together. You would have brought your horses. I would have had like a variety of like weird porcelain dolls, tiny, um, tiny stuffed animals, all of those things. I forgot, Ma, how you have uh, 
dad's Lincoln logs still. I just, I loved them. You know, you bought me that can of Lincoln logs. I loved them. I wish I still had them. Yes. And the five little peppers when they made the birthday cake for Mamsie. It is true. It is true. I read my mom's version of the books when I was little. Thank goodness for reading. <clears throat> Takes you anywhere you want to go. So now I'll slide, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll slide these three. So there's our next motif. Can you see that? Yeah, Tinker Toys, 100%. Tinker Toys, I'd like, I like to make cars. I like to make wheels and axles that's fun. Um, so fun. And of course, the penultimate, which is not the ultimate, but the my second favorite. The Spirograph. That's right, Spirograph. All my faves. So here's another visual. Look at how, and look at how different these look, these real like bricks or stepping stones of color. So you can continue that motif. Let me measure it. But this is how I'd go along. This is about, about where we want to be. So I will now reverse this back and just repeat from here. So this motif will be mirrored on this side and that will be my first wrap, right? So that's it. So that's how I tackled this. Yes, I do want to come over and play dolls and dollhouses, 100%. Ma, I need to borrow your doll. <laughs> yes, 100%. So let me show you. <clears throat> my mom My mom got me all of these toys. Every toy she got me was some kind of like craft toy. Oh my God, light bright. Yes. I want light brights now. I just... Love them. And then we turn out all the lights and look at the light bright. <laughs> so fun. So here's this, right? And we're going to, as I say, mirror this over here, and this will be the first wrap. Okay. So ideally, when that first wrap is done, this will sit about to the center. You don't really need to make them stack perfectly either. Um, and so what I would do for my first wraps, this is going to be about seven inches. My second one will be about seven inches. And when I do my third one, that's when I will really, um, uh, fine tune the length. Okay. So <clears throat> let me show you here. I'm going to put this aside and let's talk about adding thread people. Um, this might be our number one question. I don't know. We get a lot of questions, but one of our most asked questions on laddering is, and I've done this for you before, but I'm going to do it again. It never hurts. Is to show you how to weave a thread and add one back in. So here's my, my design. I've come in, I've tapered up and I've used about two yards of thread here. Okay. So I've tapered up. <clears throat> There's a brick, I um, mean, you know, a bar in the center, two bars on the out, three, two on the out, one, and then a row of eights, a tile, row of eights, a tile. This is my center, this tile right here. Now I've started to mirror and go back. <clears throat> so what I've done, one, two, three, four, five, I've got Four more rows of the eight dots right here. And then I taper down. And then I'll either tie a knot or I will, um, or I'll macrame. I'm just not sure. Okay. Oh, and Janice, yes, you did use that. Take a look at the hydria. Let me put this up on the screen right here so you folks can see it. I might have that hydria sitting here. Let me grab another. I've left, of course, my water on my desk. I didn't bring it with me. <clears throat> Let me grab. Let me grab my water. 
while you look at that and take a moment to look at the hydria wrap. There we go. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know. I think it's also because I've got the heat on in here. It's making the room a little dry. Because it's cold. It's sweater weather. <laughs> All right. There we go. Better. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so now... <clears throat> Let me show you. I have about, I'm coming to the end of my thread. And isn't that always so? It's like, I don't have that much left. I did about three yards or two yards. So maybe I do about <clears throat> two and a half yards, two and three quarters of a yard. So I wouldn't have to change out my thread. But if you do, you do. Sometimes it's easier to change your thread out and not be dealing with such a giant long piece of thread when you're working. Okay. So this length, and I should have maybe you left a little bit more, but let me measure this so you can see. I've got about four inches of thread right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave my new thread in, and then I'm gonna weave my old thread out. Miracle of miracles, I have already, uh, threaded a needle with the KO, but of course I pre-threaded it and now it has a knot. So I can't win. I cannot win. Let me just get that knot out. There we go. Don't fret when you have a knot, just kind of puzzle it out. Don't make any sudden moves. Be very gentle. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, and there is a handout. Thank you, JP, for showing that. How to add a thread to a laddering project. Fantastic. I don't know if that's more traditional laddering, Janice, or if it's the infinity, but um, it's a handy tip to have. Let's see, back and forth and back. Okay, so I want to figure my thread. I'm going to add my thread. I'm going to count three rows back because I want my needle to emerge at the same place that this thread is coming out of. Okay, so let me get, so you can count just an odd number of rows back. I'm going to just go three, okay? So here, I've gone through here. Now you could tie your thread around the side or whatever, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna pass it up from row three up to row four. And I'm not going around the leather, okay? I'm just doing it kind of like I'm adding thread if I'm bead weaving or using a bead loom, okay? or just in straight seed bead work, right? So I'm coming up here, going through here, and going back down through that third row. This is my, um, we're like going in a square, right, to lock this in. Like that, and I'm gonna pull on both of these threads to make sure everything is nice and tight, okay? Now, I'm just gonna get rid of this tail now. It's locked in, it's not going anywhere. I wanna get it out of my way. Come on. So I'm gonna come in with my um, Zeron thread snips. Carefully cut that away. Now I'm going to not go around the sides of the leather, though you could if you wanted. I'm just going to bead and weave back through the beadwork. So I'm going to go down to the second row right here. I could go back up and down, but I need to save room 
because I've got to weave this bead or this thread out. Okay, so I'm just going to come here. And now I've got my new thread that's ready to go. Now, you could, if you wanted, with this short thread, I could weave it back up into the project. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put on a few rows and I'm going to weave it off down this way, right? Um, so that I'm not poking this needle back into like the work that I wove into over here. It'll, um, it, it, I think it'll make it a little sturdier. This thread here won't be disturbed. Um, and the new thread and the old thread will kind of be spread out over the beadwork. So I'm just going to pull this thread and I'm going to pull it out of the way and ignore it. And I'm going to put on four rows. And this is a good place to end or to add a thread because the beads are all pretty uniform. Like here I had bars and eight dots and so it doesn't really matter. But here I'm just going to add eight dots, right? I think four rows. So let me add those rows. One, two, and three. Ignoring that other needle, using my new needle. Going back through and under. And as I say, you can wrap the thread around the sides, but you see it you see this thread being a little thicker. It doesn't matter. It's never going to be noticed, really, right? Um, but sometimes I like just weaving it in and out of the beads. You can kind of see where the thread comes down a little bit here between the beads. But, you know, there's so much stitching in here anyway that it's, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. So there we go. Make sure that tension is good, right? And that the thread, the row of beads is sitting across. One, two, three, four, five uh, rows. So I'm going to do two more of the eight dots here. <clears throat> so there's the eight dot underneath. There we go. and through, and then let me do this last row. And then I'm gonna weave that second needle out. Oh, come on. I'm the boss here. There we go. Come on. There we go. <clears throat> okay. One last row. and through. And back. Now I'm going to take this needle. I'm going to come down to that row. Up, turn the corner like we do with seed beads. back down, back down, and why not? One more. I've got the thread for it. Back down. Come in with those zerons, and under tension, clip that thread away. Slick, slick, slick. Okay, let me zoom in on that a little bit. <clears throat> Now we're just gonna taper down. I know we're coming towards the end of our time here, but I just wanna taper down here so we can measure. Let's taper down with two, right? Two, four, five. Two, four, five, yep. 
I'm going to taper down with two. <clears throat> and this is just, we do the tapering just so it doesn't have an abrupt ending. Right? So we go through there. You know, so it's not, so it has a nice tapered off closure into the, the transition, whatever you're going to transition from this wrap to the next. And you don't have to. You can just keep laddering, right? You don't have to put anything here if you don't want to. But I might do a little silk wrap or I might not do a thing. I might do another macrame. I don't know. But let's measure and see what this looks like. Then we just need, we're a third of the way there. So here's this pattern. It looks awfully nice, I think. I think I am. I did uh, save myself some leather to the side. When I did this macrame, I cut about a foot, right? And this would be also a good place to add more thread if you felt like you needed to. What I would do with this is I would just keep my thread here on my needle because I've got plenty of it. I just macrame over just a few like this, carry along my thread underneath and continue tapering up and going for my second wrap. So let me just measure for my second section, you know, of the, of the wrap. <clears throat> I'm going to do this here right at the button. So yeah, that wrap, this gives me about six and a half inches, but with that wrap, it gives me about seven, which is right about where I want to be. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and get this set up. And one section of this is going to be complete. I will glue when I do this macrame, let me cut a foot of it. And at the end, let's say that I was going to end this here, right? I'll start this macrame in a second. I probably would just do an overhand knot like this and tie the thread into it, tighten that down, leave enough room for the button to slip through and tie another overhand knot. I like the tying of the knot ends for the ends of my pieces, but you could, again, macrame or macrame with some smaller thread or some sealon or whatever, however you like to close it off. Okay, so let me do this. Then I'll just start, find the center of my cord, 1.5 millimeter, tighten it down, go the other way. And again, we've got a skill builder on this flat macrame. We use it on everything, really. But I'm macrameing over the two center pieces of leather and the KO. And I think I'll do, let me see, whoops. One of my ends of leather, I didn't really even them out as much. But one, two, one, two, I'm going to do one more. So on this last one is where I'm going to glue like this. Let me show you how I use the zap this time. I got my trusty toothpick. Ooh, zap's coming out a little bit of zap right in the center there. Get a little tighter. There we go. Get a little more. This helps me be really careful about where I'm placing that glue. Remember that the zap is a gel, so it's really going to stay where you put it, or at least that's the idea. 
put that aside for a second. I'll tie my knot over it. See, it's going to encompass and close all that zap there. <coughs> Use my toothpick to get rid of any extra. I'm going to turn it to the back. Do a little dot right there where the two leathers meet at that loop and where the leathers meet right there. That's it. Okay. So um, let me uh, just get a paper towel. I'm going to wipe away all of this excess zap from the top because you don't want to glue the cap on when you close it. Close it up nice and tight. There we go. <clears throat> and now I'm going to blot it a little bit with this paper. Now this zap uh, dries up pretty quickly actually, but I'm just for safety's sake, I'm going to leave it, but for the moment, but you saw me, I came in and I clipped this extra away earlier from this first one. There's a little bit extra. I think I can shave off there. That other one looks all right, but I'll do the same thing here and then I'll reset it up, bring my KO over to the left and underneath and start my stitching for my second piece. Okay, does that make sense? But I could also have this stop right here because that's my, that's my single wrap. Let me zoom it out just a little bit. I'm gonna flash Drea's back on the screen for you. Let me see if I can put these up side by side. <clears throat> Let me get Drea's back here. There we go. And so as soon as Drea's gets delivered, <laughs> we'll get the photos taken and get them up on the, on the web. We'll put it in the newsletter. But you see how these mosaics go. I mean, they're pretty simple to do. In essence, three beads. The bars, the tiles, checkmates both, checkmates bars, checkmates tiles. A dots, some leather cord, 1.5 millimeter is what we designated here. And it's also the item of the week. So 1.5 millimeter cord will be an extra 10% off. So it's time to stock up. If you are, if you're looking to stock up, the time is right, definitely. And you'll need a button of some kind, okay? And of course the thread I used, I used the KO, um, but you can also use any other skinny thread of your preference. Okay, that's it. Easy peasy. So let me just show you folks. Oh, let me get out of there. Drea's thing. Uh, let me share my screen here. <clears throat> On the website, you can see we've got the materials lists and the recipes. Let me go back to the home page. You can also see, friends, we've got our coupon code going on this month. If you spend $50 or more, you get that 15% off. All leather is already marked down 10%. So if you go shop our leather, it'll be a total of 25% off your leather. Time to stock up, I say. Um, Leather, it's always handy that you have all of your colors so you can just create, create, create. You can find under our uh, new arrivals, the new Checkmates tiles, the new um, uh, Checkmates bars that we have. So it's a really fun project and I, it'll be a great holiday gift, pretty fast and easy. I mean, this first, so even if you just do singles, right? Single stacks, you don't have to do multiple wraps, whatever works for you. Okay. So my friends, my friends, that is it for today. Now <clears throat> on Friday, 
we're doing something new. I've done a holiday ornament before, but I haven't done one in a while. <clears throat> this holiday ornament is quintessentially bead shop. Drea planted the idea and she and I did the kits. So the kits are going to launch after Friday's show. I also have for you in the same vein as the kits, this will give you a little bit of a hint. Let me show you. I can't help it. Singles of African trade beads from Ghana. These are uh, reproductions. These are new, not old, but they are delicious. And these will be out on Friday. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to show you our new ornaments. Um, I know. Remember, I showed you folks. Remember when I was shopping in my in my driveway with our buddy, our African trader from Ghana. Um, these are some of the things I bought. And I just, I'm so excited about these feathered beads. They're gorgeous. So more about this on Friday, my friends. Watch the newsletter. They're all going to launch after the broadcast, after I show you what to do with them. And this is kind of a little hint about the holiday ornaments that I have coming up. They do look like sweets. They look like sweeties for sure. I love it. All right, my friends, thank you. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. Do remember you can find us on social everywhere at beadshop.com. Go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and notification button on our YouTube channel. Um, questions, shout out over at info at beadshop.com, um, and we will get right back to you if it's during the week. Uh, if not, we'll tackle it on Monday if you email us over the weekend. Uh, other than that, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you folks so much for watching. Had a great time sharing these projects with you and you'll see more of them as soon as Drea's gets here. Uh, we'll have them up and finished for you, but I think you're going to have a lot of fun creating with these checkmates bars and tiles. Thanks a lot, my friends. I'll see you on Friday for free tip and we appreciate you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.